Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Good Book Hunting. If you are unfamiliar with this, this is a feature that we record to show you how to find books based on what is normally your most requested titles here at the library. But in the month of February, we've done something special and we've chosen to celebrate some of the winners of the Youth Media Awards this year. These are uh, children's book awards given out by the ALA or American Library Association. And we've covered a lot of the big ones like the Caldecott, the Newberry and the Prince. But today we're gonna do something a little bit extra special and a little bit different even more different, I guess, than the different we've already been doing. So normally we take a title and we find you read-alikes for that title. However, today we are going to show you how our four different resources can be used or not used to search using an author's name. So say you really like an author and you wanna find more books like that author. You just like all their books, who's similar to them? And we're going to do that today. And we are going to pick uh, this time the winner of the Children's Literature Legacy Award. This award honors an author or illustrator whose books published in the United States have made over a period of years of substantial and lasting contribution to literature for children through books that demonstrate integrity and respect for all children's lives and experiences. And that is verbatim from the ALA website. The 2021 winner was also a Coretta Scott King honor winner this year, but the winner for the Legacy Award is Mildred D. Taylor. And if her name sounds familiar, it's because she is the author of the 1977 Newbery Medal winner, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. She has also written books like The Land, The Road to Memphis, and her most latest one, All the Days Past, All the Days to Come, again, was a Coretta Scott King honor book this year. So Mildred D. Taylor has got a lot of awards under her belt, a lot of incredible, incredible books. And we are so excited to give you authors or books when we can't find authors <laughs> like her work. So today, Anne will be showing you how she has gone about using Google to answer this question. Erica will be using Novelist. Olivia will be using the catalog, the one you're familiar with if you use our website or CW Mars. And I will be using the CW Mars Overdrive catalog, which is the online ebook and e audiobook catalog. So Without further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to Anne. All right, hello everyone. I am using uh, today the good old search engine of Google. Um, and I ran through a couple of searches and just typing in the author's name, Mildred D. Taylor, got me to a lot of stores that wanna let me know that um, they sell her work. So my next option was authors like Mildred D. Taylor, and you can see that I really type it in. And the first thing that came up was Goodreads, which if you've watched any of our previous um, episodes, Goodreads will find you, they obviously have a connection to authors, but typically they'll find books um, that other readers have liked. So I kept going down since Goodreads we've covered in different, we've got an article from L, eight works by black authors to read right now. Then literature map, which was something new to me. If you click on it, they'll show you a photo, like an image with authors' names popping up all over the place. And the closer the name is to the author that you're interested in, theoretically, the closer that author is to the author that you like. But beyond that, it doesn't go anywhere. So, you know, it's an interesting, and if you feel like going down rabbit holes for each author that they list, that sounds fine. But the next one is the one that I've chosen for you is Taste Dive. And Taste Dive is what they call a, um, an organization that, or a website that collects um, reviews. And then they have an algorithm that they use. Don't know exactly what their algorithm is. We haven't checked it very much, but it will come up with reviews for music, movies, TV shows, books, authors, games, and podcasts. So 
I, as you saw, typed in Mildred D. Taylor, and it came up with a list of authors that are like her. Um, the first one that they recommend is Angela Johnson. If you click on Angela Johnson, you will get information about the author, theoretically. Uh, it lists information about the author. Um, it says that when she is born, that her picture books are simple yet poetic stories about African American families, friendship, um, common childhood experiences such as moving. Her books for older children revolve around similar themes but also explore deeper issues such as teen pregnancy and divorce. So just a lovely description about the author. If you go further, um, you will, in the description about the author like, you can find more information. This information comes from Wikipedia, which sometimes is not considered the most useful, but to me, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, the next author that they recommend is Walter Dean Myers, another, from my perspective, a great choice, um, similar to Mildred D. Taylor. Um, and it, again, lists his information um, a tough childhood led him to writing about writing and his school teachers would encourage him in his habit as a way to express himself. He more, wrote more than 100 books, including picture books and nonfiction. He won the, the Coretta Scott King Award for African American authors five times. So another author that is similar to Mildred D. Taylor, if she's who you like. Next author that they list, again, a phenomenal choice, is Sharon M. Draper. Again, the information about this particular author is listed on the right. Um, she's won a five-time winner of the Coretta Scott King Award for books about the young and adolescent African-American experience. Again, another phenomenal recommendation. Next author that they recommend is Karen Hess. Um, and she often writes, or she's known for writing um, literature um, for young adults and children, often in historical settings. And again, more information. And the last author that they recommend under for Mildred Taylor is Francisco Jimenez. And it will list again his biography um information and then the information about his book just an, another another amazing sort of immigrant story the underdog story the other thing that i want to show you before i leave this site if you go you can pursue each of these authors and it will tell you you know authors like this it will also if you keep following down it lists the top books by that author since we are still on the mildred d taylor page we've got her top books um, and then specific books that are recommended for Mildred D. Taylor. Um, and I don't know, this website, as I said, is new to us, but it seems to have if the search engines that they're using and the algorithms that they're using seem to be pretty impressive. Um, so I will turn this back to Gretchen and we will continue and see what the others came up with. Thanks, guys. So I have just discovered that apparently I share a birthday with Angela Johnson. Uh, I did not know that. Uh, this website was also entirely new to us, which shows you that even a librarian who does this for a living can use Google to find new things all the time. And in fact, that's what's important. Even though we love resources like Novelist and the catalog, there's always more to learn and more to use. So maybe Taste Eye will come back up in another round of good book hunting so that we can play with it some more because we do love our new toys. But with that being said, we are going to turn to the things we actually used today. So as we have discovered in every single one of these episodes so far is that the if you like this, you'll like that on the OverDrive catalog is terrible. So I'm going to use executive privilege and go next so that we can like hide what I get. Although I'm actually kind of impressed by this. So there is no way to search similar authors on the CW Mars Overdrive site. What I did was I typed in Mildred Taylor 
And I got the list of books that are available from our site. And CW Mars actually only owns three or well, two Mildred D. Taylor books. They own Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry in both audiobook and ebook and The Gold Cadillac in audiobook. And what was really interesting was that when I clicked on the audiobooks, I got better recommendations than I got for the ebook. I don't know why that is. So I clicked on the gold catalog. This was the list that I like the best. And here are five suggestions. The first is The Journey of Little Charlie by Christopher Paul Curtis. Newberry medalist Christopher Paul Curtis brings his trademark humor and heart to the story of a boy struggling to do the right thing in the face of history's cruelest evils. The other one was The Season of Sticks Malone by Kekla Magoon. This one is also a Coretta Scott King honor book and the winner of the Boston Globe Horn Book Award for Fiction. Meet Caleb and Bobby Jean, two brothers embarking on a madcap, heartwarming, one thing leads to another adventure in which friendships are forged, loyalties are tested, and miracles just might happen. So this one is not historical, but is a story about African-American uh, boys. In the right age group also, because we had this issue with picture books where this was not returning picture books. These are actually also books for juvenile fiction. It also suggests We Rise, We Resist, We Raise Our Voices by Wade and Cheryl Willis Hudson. This is one of the books, if you, when you see the cover, you'll, it's familiar. Um, the four most diverse children's authors, including Jason Reynolds, Jacqueline Woodson, and Kwame Alexander, share answers to the question, in this divisive world, what shall we tell our children? In this powerful collection published in partnership with Just Us Books. And then there's a huge list of people who are involved in this. It looks incredible. They're all, some of them are huge names and some of them are people that I've never heard of before but um, they look incredible. It also recommends Blended by Sharon M. Draper. 11-year-old Isabella's blended family is more divided than ever in this thoughtful story about divorce and racial identity from the award-winning and New York Times best-selling author of Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Draper. So again, a contemporary juvenile fiction book about a African-American female this time. And the last is Finding Langston by Lisa Klein Ransom. This is also a Coretta Scott King honor book. When 11-year-old Langston's father moves them from their home in Alabama to Chicago's Bronzeville district, it feels like he's giving up everything he loves. So this is the one time where this one gave good recommendations, but for whatever reason, I had to click on the audiobook. Not that you have to listen to all these on audio, you can also read them but take that as you will. Again, doesn't do author recommendations, but does books. So, Olivia, what did you find in the catalog? So, like Gretchen's resource, the catalog does not allow you to find, like, uh, recommendations based on an author. So, I also had to go by a book that was written by Mildred D. Taylor, and I just went with um, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. It's probably her most popular book. Um, Funny enough, I also had to use the CD audiobook to find subject headings that were actually helpful. Um, the book version only gives me three subject headings, um, Blacks-fiction, Southern States-race relations, Depressions-fiction. Um, neither, none of them address the fact that it's actually juvenile fiction. So if I clicked on those, I'd be getting adult books. It would be, yeah, so I went with the the audiobook, um, which has much more to pick from. And from that list, I chose the subject heading Mississippi-Race Relations-Juvenile Fiction. Um, I think that's really the central um, theme of the book. So we got quite a few returns. And the first one is White Socks Only by Evelyn Coleman. And this is a picture book. So still fiction. Um, which is grandma tells the story about her first trip alone into town during the days when segregation still existed in Mississippi. 
it just talks about grandma's experiences during that time to her granddaughter, who obviously is not living during that time and didn't have those experiences. Next, we have the Aurora County All-Stars um, by Deborah Wiles. And this is book three in the Aurora County Trilogy. So I'm not sure if you can skip around or um, can read them, have to read them in order. Um, this one is for most boys in a small Mississippi town. The biggest concern is, biggest concern one hot summer is whether their annual July 4th baseball game will be canceled due to their county's anniversary pageant. But after the death of the old man to whom the 12 year old star pitcher, House Jackson, has been secretly reading for a year, House uncovers secrets about the man and history of baseball in Aurora County that could fix everything. Next, we have Let the Circle Be Unbroken by Mildred D. Taylor, which is actually the third book in the Logan Family series, and it's the next book after Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, so that I would say that's a pretty good suggestion. And then the next book is The Road to Memphis, Me Memphis, right? by Mildred D. Taylor, which is the fourth book in the Logan Family series. So, um, oh no, actually wait, it's the fifth book. So we skip over the fourth one and get to the fifth one. But I believe there are, there are nine books in total in that series. And Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry is not the first one. Then uh, the last book that we have is Glory Be by Augusta Scattergood. And this one is about in the summer of 1964, she is about to turn 12. Glory's town of Hanging Moss, Mississippi is beset by racial tension when town leaders close their beloved public pool rather than desegregating it. So I would say that these are really good suggestions for the book, um, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, not necessarily author suggestions, though we do end up getting some books that were written by Mildred D. Taylor. So um, I would say it, it's pretty good. Also, what I really like about Olivia's list, since she was able to search by subject, is that while I feel Anne and I return authors that I'm familiar with, outside of Mildred D. Taylor, I'm actually not familiar with those authors. So that might be really interesting, too, to read books on the same subject that maybe aren't like as popular, say, as Rule of Thunder, Hear My Cry, um, and get different perspectives on the same place and seemingly similar time periods. So as per usual, we leave Erica for the grand finale because we love novelists. And while Olivia and I were not able to return author suggestions with our particular resource, novelists, much like Taste Dive, can do it all. So take it away, Erica. Okay, so um, for people who haven't seen it before, maybe we'll show it in a future one, but uh, when novelist returns author suggestions, it looks very similar to the book read alikes where it just kind of lists them along the side if you go to an author's page. So I went to the page for Mildred D. Taylor, and along the side are the read alikes. The first one is Shalia P. Moses, and the reason why it says that uh, family and faith are the bedrock for both authors' warm, realistic, but sometimes disturbing historical novels of African American life in the rural South. So, it seems like similar themes across their different books. Um, the next one is Christopher Paul Curtis, um, who uh, also writes moving and attention-grabbing historical fiction for teens and older kids about the African-American experience. Um, so both Curtis and Taylor frequently connect their different books through recurring characters and interwoven families. Um, the next one is Rita Williams Garcia, uh, so more character-driven books for older kids and teens, uh, both of them exploring the African-American experience as well, both writing historical fiction, but Williams Garcia also writes contemporary stories and books for younger children. So she might focus more on the issues today than necessarily just the stuff in the Depression era rural South. Um, next one is Christy Collier. Uh, both authors' works are issue-oriented, so I'm guessing also African-American racial issues. They have the subjects racism, prejudice, and African-American children. So we're at the point in the list where it just kind of tells you the similar uh, keywords that are with both authors. Um, and the last one is Joyce Hansen. Uh, they also both have the genre of African-American fiction, 
and the subjects of African American families, African American children, and African Americans. So I'm also guessing that that is also the um, that Joyce Hansen also writes about the Black experience in America through a family filter lens. So those are the authors I've got. So one of the reasons we were super excited to do this is to kind of show you how some of these resources can or can't do different things depending on what you're looking for. And hopefully you've seen that sometimes you have to click weird things. <laughs> for instance, the audiobook instead of the book. You don't have to be limited to just your search of a book's title uh, or, you know, do you click a few links down on Google because the first things that come up might not actually be the best despite the fact that that's how that's supposed to work. <laughs> they don't always work as intended, which is what we hope to find. Also, February is Black History Month, so maybe take one of these books or authors and maybe add that to your reading list. And if you do, don't forget to sign up on Beanstack for our monthly reading challenge. The challenge for the month of February is to read a book by an African-American author. I believe all of which is, except for Francisco Jimenez, who is Latino. All of the authors on our list that I know of are all African-American. So just another thing that you can do in order to have fun with your reading. So we hope that you have enjoyed this special month of special episodes and we will see you with new resources next month. So just keep reading and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>